Welcome back to Chill Plays. Today, I want to talk about adding Streamlabs alerts and uh, events to your OBS overlay because one of the greatest things about being a streamer is when someone follows you or subscribes, donates, uh, gives you a host. It's great to see that notification, that alert. Uh, it's fun to make variations on these alerts, uh, such as the following. I'm, I'm kind of looking for an internet girlfriend. I pre prefer if you were like kind of tallish, kind of like a modelish type of body, you were hot. And as a viewer, it's great to see your name up on the screen. Uh, I like to have fun with these. I like to find funny GIFs or sound bites and, and put those together. But I'm going to show you how to do this from start to finish. Also how to put those into OBS. So you will need a Streamlabs account and you will need OBS and a Twitch account. If you're using Twitch, this also works for YouTube. Used to work for Mixer, but not anymore. And also Facebook gaming. So uh, let's get to the intro and we'll come back to the computer and I'll show you how to get to it. All right, now that we're back on the computer, first thing you need to do is log into your Streamlabs account. I'm gonna open up a browser. I'm gonna go to streamlabs.com. Uh, this works for either Streamlabs OBS or OBS XSplit, all of the recording software that you wanna use, probably compatible with this. All this is is a browser window that you capture and it displays the alert for you. So once you're in Streamlabs, we're gonna hit login. I'm using Twitch, so I'm gonna log in with Twitch. This will link to your Twitch account in order to grab the subscriptions and the follows and the donations and all that stuff. So uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. For this recording, I'm using Twitch, so I'm gonna log into Twitch. If you have two-factor authentication turned on, it's gonna ask you to go through all the authentication. And then you're gonna see your dashboard that'll show you your previous streams, all kinds of information if you have that link. What we're looking for is uh, the all widgets over here on the left. Once you get into all widgets, we're gonna look at the alert box first, but you also see there is a chat box, event list, donation goals. There's all kinds of widgets you can put on here. We're just gonna go through a couple of these. Hopefully that'll get you started down the road to look at these other widgets as well. So go to alert box. At the top here, you're gonna see a bunch of alert box types that Streamlabs has given to you. Feel free to use these if you want to. The next section here is what type of alerts you want to uh, use. Follows, subscriptions, resubs, donations, hosts, oh, all of that stuff here. Here's the widget URL. Make sure you do not show this to anyone because this is what links your two accounts together, your Twitch account and your Streamlabs account. So you wanna make sure that this you keep this private. I will show you in OBS where to put this, but for now we're gonna go past this. There are a bunch of uh, test buttons here, so you don't have to actually create an account, follow it, or create an account, make a donation. You can actually test these out to see how they work. The next part is general settings. The Streamlabs alerts are usually a picture or a GIF, a media file, uh, some text. And then this is just the general overview for how those are gonna be laid out. Uh, if you wanna delay on the alert, you can enable, enable that here. Uh, the layout is pretty important. If you want the text over the image, the text under the image or the image and then text to the right of it. For the general purposes, I'm just gonna leave it underneath. And then there's profanity filters, custom bad words if you want to, and then save your settings once you get all that stuff set up. Then you can get even more granular. So for example, let's go to my follows. So these are how follow alerts are enabled for me. So I'll make sure that they're enabled, first of all. Uh, the layout is uh, image over text. The alert animation is how it comes in and how it comes out. If you drop this down, you'll see there's zooming in from the top, from the left. You can bounce it in, slide it in, flip it, rotate it, and then also how it leaves the stream as well. So again, zoom out, bouncing out, sliding out. Uh, for this one, it's gonna zoom in, zoom out. And then here's your message template. So what's important here is you have these variables that does a string replacement on the variable. So the, the name in the curly brackets here, for this case, I'm just using the name of the person that subscribed. Uh, people love to see their name on your stream, so they like to follow and then see what kind of craziness ensues after they follow. So this is gonna say whoever has succumbed to Chope's hot bod. That's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And then how the text is going to appear, uh, you can have the letters bounce individually, uh, you can have them pulse, wave, wiggle, wobble. Uh, the image you wanna use, if you have a MP3, you can use a sound clip to play along with it. 
You can also adjust the volume of the sound clip here with this slider. How long the alert lasts. Uh, you can go all the way up to 300 seconds. So if you want it to be that long, I tend to keep mine. If I have a sound clip that I want to use, I tend to keep the duration as long as the sound clip and then have it fade out or bounce out, whatever. If you want the text to appear after a certain point in the alert. So if I have my alert duration set for eight seconds and I only want the text to show four seconds after the alert, I can have the, the text come in halfway through the GIF or something like that. I leave this a zero because I want it all to pop in at the same time. If you are a CSS wizard, you are more than welcome to enable custom CSS. If you know what you're doing, uh, I think the stuff that Streamlabs has given you to modify these is more than enough. But if you want really fancy alerts and you know CSS and HTML, feel free to dabble in that if you want to. Uh, font settings. Uh, there are tons of different fonts. These are based off of the Google fonts. So if there's a Google font that you want to use, you can use these in here. I tend to like the default open sans, and then you can set the size and the weight if you want the font bigger, or smaller, bold or not bold, and then text color and text highlight color. So text color is anything that is not a token. So back up here in the message template, the anything with a curly bracket around it is called a token and will be replaced by that token whenever the alert comes through. So in this case, my text color is going to be this grayish white. So everything that is not a token is going to be grayish white. And then the token itself is going to be hot pink. And then the other fun part of this. So I've got one configured here. This is my main alert variation. You can also add other alert variations. So if you drop this down, you'll see that I have quite a few variations and you can also tell how random the variation happens. This is going to just randomly replace the default alert that I have, just depending on how many follows I have during a stream, it'll play a different one. So it kind of adds some variety, uh, but these are fun to set up. So I, I enjoy doing these. So this is our main one. You have to have at least one set up, but setting up the variations is just, is, is pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna go down here and do add a variation with the default settings. So the default settings being the general settings that we set up here, is going to take those and start making an alert with that. So add a variation with default settings and I'm going to name this new random alert. And then here's the condition random and then frequency. So if I want this one to play more frequent than others, or I want this one to be a super rare occurrence on the stream, then I can set this to very rarely. And that means it's going to be in the queue less times to play as the alert. The next part is the layout and this is the image above text. We're gonna keep that here. Animation, I'm gonna keep in fade in and fade out. My message template, uh, someone's name is really awesome. And thank you. And the text animation, I'm gonna leave that as ta-da, so it's gonna kinda pop in. Now the image part, this is the fun part, for me anyway. So I like to use GIFs. So I'm gonna go over here to change media. So you can upload your own GIFs if you want to. You'll see I have this library of GIFs here and, and different uh, logos and variations of that. Uh, you can also use the link button. So you don't have to download a GIF and then re-upload it. You can, if you have the link to the GIF, you can use that as well. So we're actually going to use the link here. My favorite place to get GIFs is Giphy.com, G-I-P-H-Y.com. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to search for a Thank you gift. So I'm going to scroll down and find one of these that I like. Let's use Hannibal Lecter. So if I click the link here, it's going to link copy to the clipboard. So now I have that copied to my clipboard. I can go back to Streamlabs, paste that in here and hit submit. And you see that it automatically linked the GIF. Now the sound, the sound is a little bit more, I guess in depth is the right word. If you have an MP3 you want to use, you can use that. I try to keep alerts under 10 seconds because it can be kind of intrusive on the stream. So I think 10 seconds, under 10 seconds is a pretty good ballpark estimate of how long they should be. Uh, my favorite thing to do is use movie quotes. There's some really great, awful movie quotes out there. And one that I have is this movie quote here. So I'm actually going to change the media. I'm going to grab this and drag it to the gallery. And you notice that it uploaded here. So I'm going to select that one and use select. Sound volume, I'm gonna keep that at, I'll probably just keep that around 85. Eight seconds, I'm gonna leave the duration there. 
Uh, I can actually play this and see how it sounds, so I know how long it actually is. See? Your stupid mimes! Stupid! Stupid! Alright, so it's not that long. So, uh, I'm just gonna do six seconds. So that means this alert will be on the screen for six seconds, then it'll fade out. I'm gonna keep the font the same. Let's make the font size a little bit bigger. And then highlight color, let's just do a red. I'm not gonna use custom CSS. I'm going to save this. Streamlabs will reload and here it'll say new random alert and it'll randomly replace the default alert. If you have all these set up, you can actually test each of these. So if I go to the launch button here, it's actually going to launch the browser page that OBS or Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, it's actually launching the page that those pull from. So I can scroll back down here and I can say test on the new random alert. See? Your stupid minds! Stupid! And you'll stupid. hear the sound play, you'll see the GIF, and then you'll see the text that we put into the, uh, the text box. To get these into OBS, we're actually going to open OBS. There I am. I'm gonna have a scene. You probably have a gameplay or a webcam, and I'm actually going to add what's called a browser. I'm gonna create a new browser window, and I'm gonna call this Streamlab alerts and it's going to ask you for a URL and the fun thing is this widget URL right here is the one that we want so I'm actually going to hit copy it's going to say widget URL copied come back over here and I'm going to paste that in there again keep this private the width and the height you can play with uh, the 800 by 600 is actually pretty good because if you think of your stream canvas for me is 1920 by 1080 this is actually half of the canvas size but you can also change the size of this in the uh, window as well so that's all you need to do i'm gonna click ok now the other thing to keep in mind is that these sources inside of this scene are considered layers anything at the top is going to be over top of the other source you'll see the streamlabs alerts window if I highlight this, you see it's this little box right here and I can move it wherever I want to in my stream. I kind of like them to pop up in the middle. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So it's actually kind of invisible. Well, not kind of, it is invisible until test the alert. So I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna move this over so we can see the window and then I'm gonna hit test follow here. Now, I know we made a bunch of different uh, random variations. This test follow button here actually only plays the default variation. So if you click, keep clicking this test follow button. It's not gonna go through your variations. Um, I'll show you how to test those later. So I'm gonna hit test follow. Andre had to push him out with the pillow where it snatched the pillow from Andre and it just, nah, just humping. So there was my alert that plays into OBS, which goes to the stream if you're using OBS to stream. So what happens if it's not on top, it's gonna to be hidden. And let me just show you what that looks like. If I move my webcam above my alert, and then go back and hit my test button. Andre had to push him out it. with the pillow where it snatched the pillow but from But you're not gonna Andre, see it because it's over and top. It just, nah, it's just underneath humping. my webcam. So you wanna make sure that your alerts sit over top of all of your sources. Usually, they should probably be the top source in your sources list for that scene. So that's Streamlabs alerts. It's uh, very straightforward, very simple to, to implement. But what if you want something cool like a chat box? Let's say you have a be right back scene and you want the chat to be seen as you're away from your keyboard so if we go back to streamlabs we go back to all widgets i'm going to click on the chat box here you notice this looks very similar to the alerts you have the widget url which is going to be separate from your alerts url and then you're going to see an example of what the chat is actually looking like you can change the theme you can also opt to show different badges so if they're twitch prime turbo it can show the badges or you can turn those off to not show any badges. Now, when I say chat window, this is a chat window you overlay into OBS. This is not the chat. This does not replace the chat window in Twitch. So if someone's still on Twitch, they still have their chat window. This is just if you want to show chat on the screen. If someone is using a uh, better TTV or uh, Franker face uh, browser plugins or emotes, uh, you can enable those if you want to. Uh, the text color is the text color of what people are saying uh, and you can choose to hide the messages you can have them kind of fade out after so many seconds or you can set it to zero and click this always show messages and it'll always show uh, i like to give about 45 seconds 50 seconds if you want to put a delay on the chat you can if you want to hide common chat bots you can do that or if you want to hide uh chat bot commands that start with a um that start with an exclamation point 
this is a good place here. You can click these and the commands won't show up in your chat. So it won't look weird. Same, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to copy this URL, widget URL copied up here in the top. And then I'm going to add a new browser, create new. I'm gonna call this Streamlabs chat. I'm going to paste that URL into there. Click okay. And then I have my chat box here. And of course it's empty until someone's talking. So what you can do to actually test this out is if you go to your Twitch channel and I want to pop out the chat here. So I'm going to say something in my own chat. Yo dog, what's up? So you see that it's playing here and it's also playing over here. You can go back to Streamlabs and make changes if you want to, if you don't like the way that it looks, if you want the default Twitch. So I'm going to save those. Go back to my Twitch channel. Not much, you. So you see that my name fits a little bit nicer in there. All right, and the last little bit that I wanna show you off of Streamlabs here, go back to all widgets and I wanna show you the event list. And all this is is a, uh, a list of people that have donated, subscribed, hosted. Again, you have the URL that you don't wanna show anybody that we're gonna to use to put into OBS. They have certain themes you can use, so you have, now uh, let's use this slick one and see how this looks. Uh, the theme color, uh, you wanna probably wanna set this something that matches your channel theme. And then the type of events you want to show, donations, follow subscriptions, all this kind of stuff. I just click all those on because I want to see everything. You can also set thresholds. So if somebody, if you want to set a threshold for how many uh, bits are donated before they show up on the list, let's say you don't care anything about people that donate one bit, if that's even possible, you can make sure that they have a threshold of one. So they have to donate at least one bit to be shown on the list. Max events is how long the list will go before people start popping off the top or the bottom of it. Text color again, you want something that's probably going to not clash with your uh, theme color. So I'm actually going to change this to a hot pink purple. So you see that looks a little bit more legible here uh, while it's being shown and how the animations work, font size and the font. All this stuff is pretty standard. So I'm going to go ahead and save these. Now I'm going to add this to OBS. I'm going to copy widget URL copied. You guys should be getting the hang of this by now. A new browser source. I'm going to call this Streamlabs event list. I'm going to paste the URL in there click OK. I'm actually going to lock these other ones so I don't move them and not mean to. So I'm going to set this over here. It looks like we're coming up from the bottom. So I'm going to put this in the bottom right. And then this one also has a test mode. So I'm going to do test to follow. Andre had to push him out with the pillow where it snatched so get, the pillow from uh, Andre. Again, I get my alert because and it someone just, followed. Nah, just humping it. But also in the bottom right here, it also shows that I followed. So let's see if I test hosted. I'm taking over a TV network. I'll finish up, honey, and get to sleep. So there's my alert for a host. And then you see in the bottom here, it actually says who hosted and how many people they hosted with. And then there's other things, subscriptions, donations. I'm a maniac, maniac on the floor. And I'm dancing like I've never danced before. Yeah, I had to get that out of the way. But then it shows you who donated and then the amount they donated. So that's how you add Streamlabs alerts, chat boxes, event list to your OBS overlay so that people can see their names on the on the screen whenever you whenever they follow you subscribe donate all that stuff again it's just as much fun for streamers to see that stuff as it is for people to see their name on the screen I know I love to hit a follow on someone and and see what kind of alerts they have set up thank you all again for all the subscriptions the comments the likes the subs the whatever it is I hit a thousand subscribers Never thought I would be here, so it is, my mind is completely blown at this point. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Uh, all the kind words, all the kind comments. Again, I, when I say thank you back to someone that says thank you to me, it is very genuine. Like, thank you for commenting. Um, thank you for letting me know that my content was helpful to you. That really means a lot to me. Go out there, stream, get it done. If you have questions, leave me a comment. Thank you again. Love you all. Peace.